If you saw this in the thumbnail and thought, what the hell is that? Then yeah, me too. This is the Azeron gamepad and it's essentially like a razor or weaver, but on steroids. It costs 150 euros, it's 3D printed, and despite me using it for over a week now, I'm probably more confused now than I was when I first used it. So let's take a look, let's explain what it's about, why it's very unique and why you might actually want one or maybe not. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos on weird tech like this every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The Azeron has a pretty dedicated following. You'll find enough posts on Reddit about how people bought this and it's completely changed their gaming experience. But for those of you who haven't heard of this before, let me explain about what it is and what makes it unique. Now, this, like I said, is a gamepad. Think a Razer Orb Weaver, uh, a single thing to, to put your rest your hand on nicely and semi-ergonomically, but having dedicated keys that you can map to pretty much anything you want. Although this one has uh, an extra special touch. See, most normal gamepads have normal keys, and honestly, this one is no exception. This is the classic version, which means it has two extra keys up at the top and this style of second row key, but either way, you have 20 of the more standard style keys. You have a four-way hat switch with a, a central click as well, but the, the, the special, the most important part is the joystick, because that is a full analog joystick straight from a controller, unlike most other of these types of gamepads that have just a D-pad with a cap on the top. This is the, the real deal. You can even switch out this uh, sort of top piece with a uh, Xbox Elite controller magnetic top, which is pretty interesting and pretty cool. So yeah, real deal, proper joystick. That means that when you're using this, you can basically move around with the joystick and free up your normal moving fingers to do all of the other actions that you would do in game. For a game like Fortnite, that makes a whole load of sense. Being able to swap to uh, any weapon you want, being able to build any wall that you want and any of your combination, edit, all that sort of stuff, all while still moving around just with your thumb, makes it way simpler and way faster. It's basically like holding a controller in one hand and your mouse in the other, but better, at least in theory. See, the thing is that you need to find a game that supports basically dual inputs from both a controller and a keyboard and mouse at the same time, and more specifically, one that actually works. There are a few workarounds. You can map the joystick to be, uh, instead of an analog joystick, like an Xbox controller, it can be mapped so that, you know, forward is W, left and right are A and D, and backwards is S. But if you do that, you lose the proportional input that uh, a controller or a joystick would normally have, and you lose things like diagonal movement as well, which is definitely nice to have. The other thing is that finding games that support dual inputs and actually work with it can be a little bit interesting. In a game like Fortnite, it does work. You can walk around with the joystick while tapping away at all the keys, but the UI glitches out pretty heavily. Basically, if you're walking around with the joystick, it will try and put the Xbox controller labels on the screen, but the second you move around or press any of your keyboard keys, well, then it switches back to keyboard, and if you're moving around while moving the mouse, the whole thing just glitches, and so you'll probably want to disable those labels but for the sort of person this is for, that isn't a problem. The learning curve for this is really steep, especially if you're coming from a keyboard and mouse and you're using the joystick to move around. Having to, to relearn the muscle memory of these three fingers not needing to move you around, having to memorize where you put all of your different keybinds is a, a big task and it does take a fair amount of time to get used to it. And the other thing to note is that the keybinds are probably gonna be pretty specific to each individual game. For example, if you set up a keypad to play a game like Fortnite, then those keybinds won't make any sense when you move over to a game like COD Modern Warfare. Now you do have multiple profiles that can be saved both onto the Azeron itself and in their software. The hardware ones can be toggled with the little latching switch that's inside, and the LEDs can show you which profile you're currently in. 
so that's great. And in the software one, you can have basically as many profiles as you want. You can name them all. And if you use their software and software profiles, you actually have access to a couple of extra features, namely macros and layering. Layering is essentially just pressing one button to switch to another profile automatically which is a really cool thing to have happen. But like I said, it's, those two things are only available if you're using their Windows software and not the, the hardware profiles that get saved to the device. Now, something that's pretty unique for an indie company like this is that their software is really easy to use. Like seriously, whoever designed this software, you give yourself a pat on the back because this is way better than a number of even like large company products. So. Great job there. Now the software, like I said, really easy. You pick what profile you want to manage, either the two onboard ones or whatever number of software profiles you want to use. You click on what button you want to manage and then it gives you a little pop-up of all of the options you can pick for what that button can do, whether that's a keyboard button, key press, whether that's an Xbox controller, like button or trigger, mouse buttons, or like I said, if you're using the software uh, profiles, macros, or layering too. You can also customize things like the joystick, what it wants to do, or even things like the dead zone and sensitivity, which is really useful to dial it into how you want to play. And let's face it, if you're the sort of person who wants this sort of thing, you probably want that level of customizability and adjustment to make sure that your gaming experience is just how you want it. Now, what about actually gaming on it? Well, like I said, it does take a while to get used to, but once you do it, generally makes sense. The biggest thing that the biggest trouble you will have is finding games that actually support this natively. A game like Fortnite does a pretty decent job. It works for the most part. Like I said, the UI kind of glitches out sometimes, but Fortnite isn't a game that I play personally and having to adjust to using a thumbstick or a joystick uh, to move around rather than what to me is a much faster method of movement WSD uh, did take some getting used to. In a game like Call of Duty, which in theory does support controller you know, inputs, uh, that one didn't work for me at all. Now you can remap the joystick to have WASD, like I said, uh, and then you can walk around like that, which does work, but in a game like COD where fast paced, especially side to side movement, strafing around to try and dodge bullets is pretty important. Trying to do that with a, a thumbstick, a joystick, doesn't really work. Also, the fact that you have proportional inputs on a normal joystick and you lose that with you know, uh, setting it to WSD and therefore you have to still be holding shift or uh, C for crouching, uh, that just it made it more complicated than it needed to be and I felt like I had a much better game experience on my standard keyboard. A game like CSGO was pretty similar. Again, that should support key, uh, controller inputs as well as keyboard and mouse but it didn't work for me. I couldn't get it to work except for WSD, but again, the same problem of you really need to be able to strafe left and right really quickly. And so while you can map WSD to what I would call your standard fingers, at that point, there isn't much benefit over just using a normal keyboard. Now a quick note on the design. This, like I said, is the classic version, which means it has a vertical row of a uh, second row of keys and has these extra, um, I guess, overhang buttons on the top over your middle and index fingers. Now, the bottom set of uh, three keys works fine for me. I can generally actuate those without too much problem and I can generally know which one is which, but when I go to activate any of the second row of keys, all of my fingers almost always activate the front lower buttons before I get out of the way to then be able to press the top ones. The fact that they're so far recessed means that I have to really stretch my hand to get to them. They're just not in a very ergonomic or easy to access place. And so I, I, I basically didn't end up using them all that often when I was playing with it. As for build quality, it's kind of mixed. Now, like I said, it's 3D printed, but those 3D prints haven't been finished in any way. So there's still little extrusions, little fibers where the hot extruder pulled material away as it was printing. Those haven't been cleared off or sanded or anything like that. Um, things like the key switches feel fairly flimsy and even the extra palm rest that came in the box, the support that goes under that, uh, it, it still had the support material inside it that hadn't even been broken off yet. That would have to be up to me. There's also a load of other sort of imperfections along the way. 
Uh, even things like rigidity isn't fantastic. If I'm pushing around, like I said, the, the key switches feel really flimsy, especially this thumb one. I feel like I'm going to break it off at any moment just by pressing it. Um, and even the, the sort of overall rigidity, despite tightening down every one of the hundred screws that are on the bottom of this, it still moves around to me, especially the thumb one. It just feels a bit unfinished to me. It feels like they're selling their early production units instead of going and developing them. And to, to give you context, the uh, the controller board that's in here is just an off-the-shelf Arduino TNC++. Like, that's the level of they've just sort of thrown it together and are now selling it as a finished product. And I get why it's 3D printed. Like, it makes total sense. The amount of customization that they have is fantastic to really kind of make it your own. But it just doesn't feel like a finished product. And for 150 euros, I guess I would kind of like it to be. And one interesting note, despite the numerous amount of customization you can use, including customizing the paracord cabling that's inside, you can't customize what switches they use. They use really, really light Omron switches here, which I just feel way too light for my heavy fingers. And while I'm sure that your mileage will vary, for me personally, I would like to have been able to option this with much heavier switches which would have made it a bit more of a, a nicer, a more usable experience for me personally. This is a very, very niche product. And it's for the sort of person who only plays one game, who has plenty of disposable income, the, the game that they play supports multiple in, uh, controller and keyboard and mouse inputs, and will have a load of key, key binds that they need to use on a regular basis. A game like Fortnite, for example. And if that's you, Awesome. Go pick one of these up. I think you'll really love it. It's very specialized to that use case. But if you're not in that category, if you play multiple games, if you don't necessarily want to use a joystick or you play really fast paced games like CSGO where dodging side to side is a necessity, then I'm not sure this is for you. And personally, I'm going to be sticking with my keyboard and mouse for the foreseeable future. Now, of course, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. If you have one of these, and I'm sure that since this is not an overly positive video, there will be plenty of you in the audience watching, I would love to hear your point of view on this. What makes this a, a really interesting, unique and useful thing for you? Because clearly I'm not the target market, but if you are, I would love to hear from you and hear your side of the story. Otherwise, I would love to hear your general thoughts if you don't have one of these. Is this something you'd pick up? Is this something that you would you know, steer clear of? Would you go for a more standard like Razer or Weaver type thing? Or would you just stick with a keyboard and mouse controller? Do let me know in those comments down below. Now I'm going to leave a link to their website where you can go through their configurator and select all of the different options for every single key and piece of cord. So feel free to take a look at that. And of course, pricing may change. Also feel free to check out the compact version, which has a slightly different arrangement of the, the upper sets of keys. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. There is a whole load of other links in the description you can check out if you want to support the channel. There's Patreon for uh, sponsor-free videos and access to our Money Men Discord chat. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one. It's getting cold, so this thing is really, really nice. This is the, the premium hoodie, um, so feel free to check that out. There's also going to be some more videos over there. Now, I'm not going to re leave the Razor Orb Weaver video because that is terrible, uh, but I'll leave the, the peripheral reviews if you want to check that out instead. Otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.